morning, everybody. Good to see y'all. Hey, this is Mother's Day. And I remember as a little boy how special Mother's Day was in our church and everything. And we used to sing this old hymn that uh, I remember very well. And it's called, Oh, Blessed Day of Motherhood. Cherie, were we able to get that on the screen? Great. All right. Uh, if you don't know this hymn, I want you to learn it. I think it's a wonderful song and a tribute to our wonderful godly mothers. And I'll find you know, my name is Michael. Hello. 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 Am I there? Now, yeah, there we are. Here we go. Ready? Oh, blessed day of Thank you. 
Now, did every mother get one? Because we have one little boy and he's got one he'd like to hand out. We have a few extra. If you did not get one, hold up your hand. Because we still... Cherie, way back there in the sound booth. Don't knock her down. Did everyone get one? <clears throat> Mothers, we want you to know, thank you so much. You guys just did a great job, and I am so proud of you. You just did wonderfully. Does everyone have one? Every, everyone have one? Okay. What a special time it is to gather together, and we're here pr primarily to worship the Lord. But isn't it wonderful that one time a year, at least once a year, we can just pause on a Sunday and say to our mothers, Mom, we love you so very much. And I need to get my Bible because I have a little poem I want to read to mothers. And uh, just to let you know how special and dear you are to all of us. <clears throat> it says, when I was a tiny tot, a problem, this I know. I brought you many headaches, and I caused you grief and woe. For years you cared for me, but now my baby days are through. And turnabout's fair play, dear mom. Now I'll take care of you. It always makes me happy when I find some little thing that perhaps may make you happy, make you laugh, and want to sing. But no matter what I do for you, I know it will never be enough to ever pay you back for what you've done for me. The years are swiftly rolling by and gray is in your hair. Don't think that I don't know, Mom, that I helped to put it there. But as long as God permits me to stay beneath the blue, I'll do my best to show you, Mom, how much I care for you. I want to ask at this time if every mother in this house would please stand together. We want to just give you a round of applause. Every mom in this house, would you please stand out a punch up in the choir? <laughs> you may be seated. Thank you so much for being here today and giving us that privilege and opportunity to let you know how much we love you and how dear you are to us. Now, I have just a couple of, of brief announcements I need to make, and that is that I don't have many announcements to make. But now, Jennifer, tell us what day, because I don't see it in the bulletin unless my eyes missed it, what day are we having the end of school party, which also is the uh, early pre sign up for Vacation Bible School? What day and what time is that? Saturday, June the 1st. So we still have a few weeks off, but plan to invite every kid that you can find in your family, next door, uh, somewhere else. But, and if, if they need a ride, bring them here, because I guarantee you this is going to be a very, very special day. And we hope to see a bunch of you coming. Now, on Monday, June the 3rd, we start Vacation Bible School. You see the the, the, the uh, picture on the screen, Breaker Rock Beach. And man, this is going to be our time to just let kids know that God loves them. And one more time, if you know of any children, especially those in your family who would be blessed by this, you need to get them here. Even if you got to put them in the car and bring them here yourself, because this is going to be a very special time. There are other things that can be announced today, but right now I just want us to stop and have a wonderful time of prayer for our mothers. And, and I know that uh, Brother Tim with us loved his mom very dearly. Brother Tim, would you come and lead us in this prayer uh, for a blessing of our mothers and let this be our opening prayer for this time of worship, please. Father God, as we come before you today, how we do thank you for our mothers and the impact that they've had in our lives and training us to be more like you. Father God, we pray for all of our mothers here today. 
and for those that weren't able to be a part of the fellowship today, Father, we pray that wherever they may be, that you will pour out your blessings upon them. Father, many mothers are home with you already, and Father, they are missed today. But we thank you, Lord, for how they touched our lives and helping us to grow and mature in our faith. And, and Father, we just pray that uh, each and every one that is still living here upon this earth would have a blessed day as we think about and reflect upon the role that they play in helping our families, Lord, to be what they are. Father, again, bless our time together this morning. And again, we just give praise to you for being our great God. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, let's stand together and welcome each other in the name of the Lord this morning. each lesson utilizing resources and the gospel project. Uh, every week students will experience the good news through Bible study and that is Christ-centered and heart-transforming and missionary-minded. Youth Sunday School meets every week in the upper room, our student ministry meeting space, and all students are invited grades 7 through 12 and Sean Fanchette is the teacher of that group. So we recognize them today. Let's give them a hand. And youth, you stand and all. Sean, oh, yeah. We thank you so much and for the part you play. You're a very important part. You know, a lot of people say, hey, the youth of the church of tomorrow. Hey, no, the youth of the church of today. We need them. They're very much involved. All right, let's continue on with our time of worship and praise. A Christian home. Why I'll let you stand. Hold
All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak 
Fear may come, but fear will lead. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life see the cross the empty grave the evidence is endless all my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus, oh. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life your promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life why should I fear the evidence is here why should I fear the evidence is here? Let's stand together for our time of offertory. We start with the family prayer song, 454, and then roll into 634. Lord, up to thee, O cross.
Jesus' name. on the water. 
Yes. Noisy church is a living church. And when I hear noise, I see signs of life. And I love that life because it's the life of the Holy Spirit of God who is living here. I want to go ahead and tell you, Cherie, you can take that one off the wall there because we're not going to do the message that you saw on the screen just a second ago or the one that's printed in your bulletin. I mean, the Lord got a hold of me and uh, he said, you don't need to preach that message today. Save it for next Sunday. So I already have the one for next Sunday. Gladys, when you print the bulletin, just go ahead and put this one in next Sunday's bulletin. As I think about preaching about marriage and today is Mother's Day, I realize that so many of our mothers are widows. And um, we'll just say the marriage message for next week. Let me share with you another poem. This one is titled, A Mother's Secret. Someone asked a mother whose children had turned out very well the secret by which she prepared them for usefulness and for the Christian life. And without hesitation, she said, When in the morning I washed my children, I prayed that they might be cleansed by the Savior's precious blood. When I put on their clothes... I prayed that they might be arrayed in the garments of salvation and in the robe of God's righteousness. When I gave them their food, I prayed that they they might be fed with the bread of life. And when I started them on the road to school, I prayed that their faith might be as the shining light, brighter and brighter to the perfect day. When I put them to sleep, I pray that they might be enfolded in the Savior's everlasting arms. Today I'm going to preach a message with this title. You might want to jot this down. And you can use the very notes in your bulletin and just scratch over them or around them. The title of this message is, The Mother Every Child Needs. The Mother Every Child Needs. And I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 31, and we'll begin reading from verse 10 and go through the end of that chapter. Yes, some of you probably have heard this as the Proverbs 31 lady. And that's what I'll be preaching about today, the Proverbs 31 lady. If you need another title, you can just call it the virtuous woman. But I kind of like the mother that every child needs. Again, if you're taking notes in between each of the ones that you see printed on your page, there's room to just put beneath each one of them the title of this particular point because this message also has nine points. Let's look together at Proverbs 31 and begin reading with verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. The first thing I think the wise man said about the mother that every child needs is she is highly valued. I think it's interesting that in this message today, I will begin with the high value of the mother and end with the need to praise her because she is so highly valued. The Bible tells us, at least the wise man here says, He equates her value and her worth as being the worth that's far above rubies. Rubies were very precious stones back then and still are. They were very expensive then and they still are. And he equates her value to the value of very precious sought-after stones above rubies. I want to tell you today that in a world that is so messed up and so confused, When you can find a woman who loves God and who loves her husband and loves her children and walks with God and reads the Word of God and believes it and tries to to measure her life according to the truth of God's Word and lets lets God's Word lead her and guide her, you're looking at a woman who is hard to find. And you have found a woman whose value is priceless. And the wise man knew that. He said that this woman is highly valued. 
But let's continue in our notes here. Not only is she highly valued, but number two, we will see that she is very honest. She is honest. We find that in verse 11. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. The heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. He has a wife that will be true to him and will be true to her family and he knows that this wife can be dependent upon. She is one who can be trusted and she is honest. We find evidence of his feelings about that over in verse 25. He said, strength and honor, honor are her clothing. This is a wife who is honest and who tells the truth and who is truly good deep to the core of her heart. Oh, this is a woman that her husband can trust for the entirety of of their lives together. But there's a third thing that the wise man tells us about this mother that every child needs. Not only is she highly valued, not only is she honest, but thirdly, she is devoted to her husband and to her family. We see this in verse 12. She does him good and not evil all her days. Notice The wise man said all her days. He wanted us to understand this is no short-term devotion. She is devoted to her husband. She is devoted to her family, not just for a little while, but for her entire life. She is devoted to them. Oh, how precious it is. And I'll continue to go back to point one. How precious it is when a man can find a woman who is devoted to him And will stay true to him all of their days together on this earth. She is devoted to him and to her family. And oh how this blesses her children when they see that their mother is highly valued. That when they see that she is honest. When they see that she's devoted to their father and to them. What a blessing it is to be in a home like that. But then number four, the wise man tells us another wonderful attribute about the child, the mother that every child needs. Not only is she highly valued, not only is she honest, not only is she devoted, but she works hard. She is not lazy and she's not afraid of hard works. We see evidence of this Throughout this particular chapter, look with me at verse 13 and continuing. She seeks wool and flax. She willingly works. There's that word works. She works with her hands. She's like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is still night. In other words, before the sun rises, she is up and she's ready to work for her family. She rises while it's still night. She provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and she buys it from her profits. She plants a vineyard. I mean, if she's not looking for enough work, she goes ahead and takes the, the, the profit from, from other things she sells and she plants a vineyard. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, when you plant a vineyard, You've just gotten yourself into something that's going to take some time and some labor in your life. And so she takes profits from one thing and she plants a vineyard with those profits just begging for more work to do. This lady is definitely a hard working lady. In verse 17, she girds herself with strength and she strengthens, strength, strengthens her arms. We're going to come back to that in a minute. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp, notice this, her lamp does not go out at night. When the wise man said her lamp does not go out at night, he means that you can look up to her room and you can see that's where she's still working. She may be sewing something or making clothing or making garments because she's not afraid to work a lot. This woman is truly an example of someone who demonstrates a great work ethic. 
We continue in the scripture where we see evidence of her hard work ethic. Notice in verse 21, she's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all of her household is clothed with scarlet. We see in verse 24, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. My goodness, this woman works all the time. And then in verse 27, we see one more reference to the hard work that this woman does. She watches over the ways of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. This woman is a demonstration and an example of a great work ethic. I want to tell you something that I said at my mother-in-law, Roberta Riles' funeral many years ago when she passed away. And that is she was like this Proverbs 31 lady when it comes to working hard. She was an example of a person who was not afraid of hard work. She died at the age of 84. She did not quit work. She took sick leave and was going to have surgery. And six weeks later, she died. She was all ready to go back to work when she left work. So she worked literally until she took off to have surgery. And then she passed away at the age of 84. Now I know there are a lot of people in America today who are still working in their 80s. But I'll guarantee you, they're still very rare and very hard to find. And this woman, my mother-in-law, was like the Proverbs 31 lady. She was not afraid of hard work. And I'm going to tell you, I know her two sons. One of them just went to heaven back last year. I know her daughter well. And I know that they learn from their mother. They all three have a very great work ethic. And they're not afraid of hard work. Now it may mean that they do not necessarily work outside the home. But they can work hard within the, the home. Some of you have moms who every time you turn around, they're in the kitchen making something that they want you to enjoy. And you say, Mom, when are you going to come out of the kitchen and get in that recliner and kick up your feet and rest? Well, they don't want to because they enjoy the hard work that they do for their family. And she's hard working. And as I look around this room, I see some hard working moms in this room today. But there's another thing that the wise man said about the mom that every child needs. Not only is she highly valued, not only is she honest, not only is she devoted, not only does she work hard, but she also is strong. And we see evidence also in the scripture of this. Look back at verse 17. She girds herself with strength and she strengthens her arms. She girds herself with strength. She is a strong woman. I would dare to say that the wise man here not only indicated that she was strong physically, but she was strong uh, mentally and emotionally. She was strong and she was the determined person and she was not afraid to do what was necessary to bless her family. And she was unafraid and she was strong. We see evidence of this again in verse 25. The wise man said, strength and honor are her clothing. She's strong. And I'm telling you, when you find a strong woman, let me say this very clearly, you find a woman who has found her strength in the source of all strength. She's found her strength in the Lord. And God has made her strong and this is a mom that children will truly be blessed by. And I see children in this room who know that your mom is strong like the Proverbs 31 lady. And you too are blessed by the strength that she has. But then we also see the wise man tells us another characteristic of this child, this mother that every child needs. We find it in verse 20. It says she extends her hand to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. That means she's generous. And when she sees there is need, she compassionately greets that need with her generosity. She tries to reach out and help people when she sees that they need help. What a blessing for children to have a mom that is generous 
and does not hoard in all that she has and keep it to herself, but she gives it away and she shares it and she's compassionate with those that she sees need. But then the wise man tells us something else about this wonderful mom that every child needs. We find also in verse 26 that she is wise. He says she opens her mouth with wisdom. She opens her mouth with wisdom. I remember the, back when Jan and I took our daughter Jessica to Disney World many, many years ago. I don't think she was but about three or four years old at the time. And we were waiting in one of those lines to get on a tram that would actually take us from the parking lot into the park. And we had to wait in quite a lengthy line. And we got there fairly early that day. And we had to wait just like everyone did. And there was a man just a few rows over from us. And he was just a fussing and complaining that they should have had more trams and, and been, had been more prepared to take people back into the park. And I remember after he got on that tram and he left, there was a fellow next to me. And he said, my mama always told me that, uh, that you know, you can sit there and let people wonder if you're stupid or you can open your mouth and you can prove it. <laughs> I didn't say it, but that's what he said. But it sounded pretty cool. <laughs> let me say it again just in case you missed it. You can let people wonder if you're stupid or you can open your mouth and you can prove it. The Proverbs 31 lady was wise. And when she opened her mouth, you saw and you heard wisdom. She was careful to think about what she would say before she said it. It reminds me of the fly, and I know you've heard about this fly, and I'm just tempted to tell it, so I'm going to go ahead and tell it. You remember the story of, of, the, of the king who sat there at the table, and he was eating a, a, a piece of bologna and a piece of cheese, and he just sat there, and he kept cutting wedges from that, that stick of bologna and eating and eating and eating. Well, there was a fly that was flying around in the room, and he was so tempted to just fly down and get him a little taste of that delicious bologna and that cheese too, but he was too afraid to. Every time he'd fly near, the man would swat at him, and he had big old ham hock hands, and, and that fly was afraid of this man, and for good reason. But he was patient, and he finally just lit on the wall and waited and waited, and finally he saw that the man just laid his head over on the table, and he went to sleep. And when he heard him snoring, he knew it was a safe time to come and eat. So he flew down and he, he landed on that stick of bologna and he ate and ate and ate just like the big man did. He just kept filling his stomach with that delicious bologna and he just kept eating. And finally he decided, you know what, if I don't get out of here right now, I may not ever get out of here so he tried to flap his wings and he couldn't take off. He was so full of bologna. And so he saw that the man's knife work that he used to cut the bologna was just sticking straight up in the, the stick of bologna. So he climbed up that knife handle and he got right on top and he started to flap his wings. Well, somehow his buzzing awoke the man. He started shaking himself awake and he noticed the fly. Well, the fly thought, if I'm not going to get off this stick now, I'm never going to get off of it. So he jumped off the, the, the handle of the, that knife and he landed flat on the table and the big old man just squashed him with his fist. Now there's a moral to this story. You're waiting for it, aren't you? Don't fly off the handle when you're full of baloney. <clears throat> if you're going to open your mouth, make sure that you're not full of baloney when you open your mouth. And the Proverbs 31 lady was wise. She would not open her mouth unless wisdom would come out. But then the wise man tells us two more things about this Proverbs 31 lady. We find one of them in verse 26. We've already seen that she opens her mouth with wisdom. But then another thing he said is on her tongue is the law of kindness. When she speaks, she speaks words of kindness, not criticism. Words of kindness, not cruelty. Words of kindness. There are some people who pride themselves in being forthright. And it is good to be forthright to a point. But if your forthrightness hurts people's feelings with your words, then you're too forthright. 
And you must be careful to guard your tongue not to say things that are hurtful and that would uh, tear people down. And so this woman's tongue lived by the law of kindness and she was a kind woman. She was the kind of mom that every child needs. But last of all, I want to tell you the wise man included one more thing about her. And we find it in verses 28 through 31, which is the last of this chapter. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. He says, many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is passing. But a, listen to this, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. So therefore give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I want to tell you today that motherhood, I think, is one of the greatest blessings that children could ever possibly enjoy on life when that mother they have is a mother like this. You say, Danny, I've done messed up. I, I have really... Uh, I have broken some of these laws that you've just read. I, I don't exude all of those wonderful qualities. Well, can I tell you this? It's not too late to start. You can start right now. And if you have missed some of these points and you say, I wish that my life had some of that in it, what, what's, you know, why, why wait? Start today and say, you know what? I want to be more like the mom that every child needs I've got an idea that there are a lot of children today, not just in this room, but all over this country today and perhaps around the world, who are taking the opportunity to let their mom know that she's very loved and they love her and they appreciate her. I want to tell you children today, take the opportunity to come to your mom and let her know. And if you can't be with her, then call her. And let her know that she is very loved. And you appreciate all that she has done to bless you. And to make your life better. I've got an idea. There are a lot of Proverbs 31 moms in this very room today. And you could check every one of those nine points. In the wise man's description of the mom that every child needs. As we come to this time of the invitation. It's simple. It's very simple today. And. And this is it. That is, if you'd like to be that better mom, then tell the Lord that. Say, Lord, I've messed up in some of these ways, but today I commit myself to you. And I want to be everything that my children needs in a mom. I want to show them Jesus and let them see Jesus lived out in my life. There may be some children today who just need to say, you know what, I have really messed up in the area of letting my mom know that I love her as much as I do. And you may just need to say, I recommit myself to letting my mom know, and my dad too, that I love them, and they are very precious to me. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I cannot think of a better way to fill your mom or your dad's heart with joy than to put your faith in the Lord Jesus. Now, don't do it because you want to please them, do it because you need Jesus in your heart. And he's knocking on your heart's door and he's saying, let me come in. And today you might say, you know what? I believe he is knocking at my heart's door. And today I'm going to open up my heart and let Jesus come in to me and be my Lord and Savior. As we stand together, whatever that decision is that you need to make, will you make it right now and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender afresh to you. Would you do that as we stand, as Brother Tim comes? Would you make that fresh commitment to the Lord right now? <clears throat>